Hi guys, my name is Ryan Parker. I'm the marketing executive for Human Kinetics Europe and today I'm in Newman University in Birmingham and I'm going to be interviewing one of the most cited sports scientists on the planet, Martin Bouchet. He's the co-author of our brand new book, The Science and Application of High Intensity Interval Training and he's also the head of performance at Paris Saint-Germain. Can you give me a brief description of what high intensity interval training actually is? Yeah, sure. So it's basically the, um, the repetition of some uh, high intensity intervals uh, bouts interspersed with some uh, more lower intensity uh, recovery periods. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So is HIT for everyone? Is it for just elite athletes? Is it for your casual athletes? Would you prescribe it to elderly people, injured people, pregnant people? Yeah. No, sure. It can be applied to any type of population as long as it's well programmed and, and managed. So there is evidence that every single type of person can benefit from, from HIT, definitely. Okay, perfect. So if you have an injury, say you have a leg injury, you could still do HIT just using your upper body or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, perfect. So what is the difference between high intensity interval training and just going hard? So you might hear trainers in the gym saying, just go hard, just train hard. What, what's the difference there? Yeah. No, I think that's the, probably the, one of the major ad advantage of HIIT is that when it's well managed, well programmed, you can hit definitely some very important physiological targets that will have some performance and health benefit, but why not obligatory uh, being perceived as, as very hard? That's why uh, it's the interplay of the manipulation between the intensity, the duration of the intervals, the recovery, that, that creates um, heat, can, could be perceived a bit complex in terms of programming, but, mm -hmm. but that makes the interest as well. So would, you, would the regular gym trainer be able to describe high intensity interval training or is it quite scientific yeah. and sort of above them? No, sure not. Everyone uh, should or could be able to, to, to prescribe. Uh, it's, not a, it's, it's more the approach that has a scientific basis, mm -hmm. but then the implementation just follows a few simple rules that once understood are just uh, very, very easy to implement uh, anyway. So when doing high intensity interval training, should everybody be hitting around 90% of the VO2 max? Yeah, that's something that's been around for, for a while. Mm. Um, yeah, probably, but if you just say 90% of VO2 max, how do you use that for prescription. No one can measure his VO2, his VO2, the actual VO2 during training. So we use other markers of intensity that allow us mm -hmm. to bring people into this zone, which is 90 or above 90, could be 95. But it's more using external um, tools, external clues, such as um, a percentage of maximal aerobic power that would have been measured on, uh, on an ergometer, yeah. um, maximal aerobic speed that would be measured on a treadmill or yeah. in the field. So it's more using external clues to help us to reach the right metabolic intensity. So what exactly are the methods to prescribe high intensity interval training? Yeah, so I've been following up a bit what I was just uh, mentioning about maximum aerobic power, maximum aerobic speed, yeah. using agrometers, but we could also prescribe um, heat using other types of tests, such mm -hmm. as, for example, the, the 3015 intermittent fitness test, yeah. which is a field-based test that I developed now uh, a while ago, yeah. which is kind of combines um, the ability, the, the, the evaluation of not only maximum aerobic power, but because it's, it's performed with the shuttles on the ground, evaluates as well the change of ability uh, capacities of the athletes, which obviously concerns a lot of uh, team sports yeah. athletes, but also the recovery of those athletes. So it's like a change of direction and things exactly. like that, yeah. So yeah. relevant so, for like football and rugby and yeah. such sports. Yeah. yeah, so the idea is to, to, to evaluate in one go, mm -hmm. not only the metabolic maximal rate of energy production, mm -hmm. VO2 max, but also change of direction, recovery ability, um, in, into one, to have mm -hmm. something that is probably more representative of an athlete capacity yeah. when it comes to programming. So is that why it's better than something like the bleep test, for example, because the, you know you, you've got the you've got the rest period in between. Yeah, so it's an evolution of, of yeah, that test, yeah. if you yeah. Okay, perfect. So could you briefly tell me how you would monitor high intensity interval training? Yeah, so obviously there are many tools at uh, our disposal. Mm -hmm. but then depends on who you are, who you work with, yeah. what are your, um, um, how much you can invest in the technology or not. But importantly, it's important to measure uh, athletes' perception of effort, mm -hmm. such as simple uh, Likert scales, for example. 
But then in terms of monitoring the external uh, work, mm -hmm. uh, now we have available GPSs, yeah. power meters in bike or meters, and to measure the internal response of that, which is important, you were mentioning VO2 max before, but mm -hmm. VO2 is still impractical to measure in the field, yeah. but we can have a guess using heart rate, and yeah, yeah. nowadays everyone can measure heart rate. Yeah. So get a bit of measuring how athletes perceive the efforts, mm -hmm. what are they actually doing, the external yeah. work, and how do they respond internally with, for example, heart rate. Yeah. So in your new book, which has come out, High Intensity Interval Training, you talk about 20 different sports. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me how it can be applied across the 20 different sports? So, you know, because some of them will be like um, team sports, and some will be individual sports, and some will be where you clearly need more high intensity, such as soccer or sprinting, and some of them are, are, are less intense, perhaps. Would you be able to tell me how it could work across such a variety of sports? Yeah. Now, the main idea is consider that heat can be beneficial to any type of sport, mm -hmm. but it's to find the right uh, programming for each sport. So for a given context, some sport will benefit more from long intervals, some other will benefit more for shorter type of repeated sprints. And the idea, and that's all about, all what the book is about, is to, ex to explain, to teach, or to make people understand how to manipulate and choose the best intervals for the best fit for the sport. Yeah, thank you. And you go, and you go into that in, in the book. Exactly. The different times yeah. spot and how it will be for different, different spots. Yeah. So high speed management is important for, for injury prevention. How can, how can HIT help? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So basically, um, the way HIT, depending on how HIT is designed, uh, obviously for run-based sports, we can manage and modulate the amount of high speed running. So for players that will have already a lot of high speed running in their legs, we can design HIT sessions that kind of restrain, restrict the amount of high speed running, mm -hmm. not to overload them, yeah. but conversely, for players that may need uh, top-ups to catch up with uh, what they've been missing while not playing, for example, yeah. heat is a very good way to just add and uh, increase their high-speed running demands. Yeah. Okay, so it's a modulation of, uh, of the, 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 the running through heat that is beneficial. So we get a lot of people doing high-intensity interval training now for aesthetics reasons as well, to, to burn fat and things like that. Is it recommended for that? Yeah, yeah, sure. For, for a long time, we've been talking about the, the specific uh, fat burning intensities, which, which obviously work in terms of what happens acutely. But overall, heat is also a way to increase, increase the overall energy expenditure. So in your overall uh, daily balance, mm -hmm. that definitely participates uh, into, into creating a, a, an energy deficit. So is it true that your um, metabolism will be burning throughout the day if you do like a high intensity interval training? Every morning, is, is there some science to, to prove that? Yeah, there's a lot of interplay with uh, what's your diet at the same time as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but I would say that to, to make it simple, it just contributes to the overall energy, um, energy expenditure. product expenditure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. So finally, just before I wrap up the interview, what do you see the future of high intensity is? Yeah. Uh, not sure about the future of overall high intensity, but at least the future of what we are trying to, to develop still with, uh, with, with my uh, colleague uh, Paul. Yeah. It's just to bring um, the science further into the, into the practice, go through more examples with uh, new sports that we haven't had the chance to in insert yet in the book. So there will be definitely a second edition with probably some, uh, said, some, some new disciplines that are not yet in the book. We probably through the years um, realize that things should be fine-tuned a little bit mm -hmm. so we're gonna keep on working to, to, to improve the, the, the product obviously. Sounds perfect. Thank you very much for your time okay. today. Cheers. Thank you.